So if you followed along, if you've, if you've been a part of our monthly buzz webinars, you know that earlier this year, I talked a lot about the bee collapse that we were seeing in the beekeeping industry. I, I did videos from California where uh, the first bee collapse was realized. Um, and I've talked a lot about the huge losses we've experienced as an industry. One thing we've been waiting on is the why. Why did the bees collapse? And I've shared a number of concepts or theories over the past few months, but we're just now starting to get some of the actual data back that points to some potential causes of this collapse. So there were a lot of bee samples taken uh, in the Central Valley of California uh, where a lot of the bees were collapsing. Now, again, the collapse had nothing to do with California. It just so happened that all the bees in the country were shipped to California to pollinate the almonds. Um, and that's the first major beekeeping event of the year. And so that was where it first became apparent. Again, it had nothing to do with California. It's just that's where all the bees were um, or all the bees were being shipped. So um, when the collapse started, I worked with the USDA. A number of other beekeepers did too to gather up a lot of samples of bees, of varroa mites, of comb, of pollen to test uh, and try to understand, hey, what is going on with our bees? Those tests take a while to get results on. So we've been waiting all this time. We're just now getting the first of the results. Now, these results um, are not uh, exhaustive. Uh, we're going to get more results over the coming months, but the first um, round of testing showed that uh, a potential cause of the collapse was really high varroa mite resistance to amitraz. Now, amitraz is the most commonly used mite control product or ingredient um, in the industry. It's the active ingredient in Apivar, uh, which is the strip you put inside the hive to kill varroa mites. And it's been kind of the backbone of varroa mite management in the industry for the past 20 to 30 years. We think we're finally, that the USDA report shows that we're seeing an increase and rapidly increasing resistance from, uh, up from the varroa mites uh, with amitraz. So that the amitraz doesn't seem to be killing the varroa mites as well as it once did. And so this USDA report that came out showed that, hey, uh, the varroa mites that, samples that we took in California, the bee samples that we took in California, were showing 100% resistance to amitraz. Or they, those varroa mites had genes in them that were uh, denoted resistance to amitraz. Now, it doesn't mean that amitraz doesn't work at all. It just means that it's not working as well. And because the industry is so reliant on this product, um, even it not working 30 or 40% as well means that you can have mass collapses as the varroa mites get out of hand. <clears throat> now, what that means is, as beekeepers, um, I'm not necessarily saying, oh, never use Amitraz. It's more of make sure you test to make sure your treatments work. So when you do a mite treatment, make sure after you conclude the treatment that it actually was effective. Uh, there are beekeepers that still are seeing a lot of effectiveness with Amitraz. Some are not. So instead of it being kind of this foolproof treatment, which is what it has been, um, we have to test after to make sure it actually works. I think there will be other test results that come out as well, which also point to additional causes of the collapse, you know, potentially pesticide issues. Um, environmental issues, other treatment or chemicals uh, that could be contributing to it. There's a, a wide array of possibilities, but this is the first report that's come out and it's pretty, um, you know, it was a pretty uh, extensive uh, round of testing that was done. And we're, we're certainly seeing that um, we can't just rely on Amitraz as, as a mite treatment, as an industry. So good. I mean, it's good news overall. It gives us uh, a glimpse into what we need to be doing better as beekeepers. So for you, uh, most of you listening are small scale beekeepers. Um, I would, I would lean into rotating treatments. Don't just use Apivar strips, um, but rotate, you know, use, um, you know, Apigard, use uh, Apivar, then use, uh, you know, mite away quick strips, you know, use oxalic acid, 
you know, use two or three different treatments rather than just one. And then make sure you're, again, you're testing your varroa mite levels after the treatment to ensure that it works.